Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel where we explore beautiful parts of New Zealand. Today we are at Hookah Falls. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is a big tourist area and you can see that the amount of people taking selfies on the bridge is just unbelievable. So, but yet, it is still a beautiful, natural place and it's well worth coming here to photograph and especially to visit. Now, the goal today is how can we photograph the falls in a different way? So I'm gonna to try to find three different views that I can photograph to get the falls so that you can see which angles to get. And also, it's just kind of a challenge to not just go where you typically would be. Um, I will try to get that shot, but I'll try to also go somewhere up high. Um, I would like to go just right down the middle, right on the bridge, but standing on the bridge while I was just trying to do some B-roll, I noticed that it was just shaking, and the shaking was from all the people walking by. So that's gonna be interesting with the long exposure. Not sure if that's gonna come out. If it's shaking, it can create vibrations. Vibrations can create a soft photo. So let's just go explore this area and see what kind of images we can get. Topo is a really interesting place. I love it here. I mean, you can do so many activities. You want to go on a jet boat? We gotcha. You want to go prawn fishing? You, you can go prawn fishing. Don't know where that originated? You can look it up. Let me know in the comments below. That one's a bit funny for me. <laughs> but it has such great natural sights that it's just an amazing part of the North Island of New Zealand. So, this river here is part of the Waikato River and it's pretty much flowing from the Topo Lakes, which the water is just collected from the whole region. And it carves right through here. And the water level can rise up to about 11 meters and goes down to about six. The average is about eight meters high. And it dumps about the average 200,000 liters of water per second, which is a lot. So yes, yeah, just an amazing river and rapids. If you have the chance, I'd definitely recommend stopping by. So I've decided to leave that hectic area. It's just a lot of people taking photos down there. And I can see that there's a platform right up above and there's nobody on this trail. So I'm hoping there won't be too many people. So I'll take a photo from up there. Then I'll go on the bridge. Then I'll try to find another spot or some kind of combination. <laughs> but we'll see you at the top. So I'm at my first shot, and I'm finding it a bit tricky up here because it's such a steep angle. I'm, I'm on this platform here, so it's kind of stopping me from getting any closer. And I tried going a bit further down this way, but there's just no view on this side. And I can't really go in front here because it just drops to nothing. And I'm fighting this foreground element here that I'm just not liking. But I was trying to figure out how else can I get it. What I ended up doing is I actually raised the camera higher so that the foreground element of the trees here aren't as bad. And this way I can see the falls straight down. And all I'm doing now is just playing with the time. Whether I do one second to get some flow but a bit of the water still kind of falling or if I want to just go with that milky look and I'll just go push it to 10 seconds. And that way, the whole thing will be buttery smooth and there'll be less texture, but it does give a different effect to the photo. So I'm gonna keep playing with this shot and then we're gonna head out to the second one. 
And while we're up here taking photos, we may just get lucky and see a jet boat come by. They're really cool. They get really close to the falls. And um, I've been on it before, not on the hookah jets, on rapid jets. And man, this is a thrilling ride. I like the rapid one because you're, you're really close to the canyons and it just feels faster. But I'd love to try out the hookah ones just to see how it is. So I pretty much found my composition here and I'm at F11 and I'm playing again with the speed so I'm around 6 to 10 seconds seems to give me a good flow of water what I'm looking for is for the water falling but going out and leading you out towards the other side of the photo and that's what the water is doing as it's being extended with the shutter about 6 to 10 seconds So I just finished with that shot up there and in good time too because there's a bunch of people that started walking up there. I'm heading down to the falls now to the bridge. Um, same situation, settings will be similar. I won't be talking while I'm down there. It's just too crowded and I don't think you're gonna hear me from the roaring of the water anyways. So what I'll do is I'll just set up the camera, I'll take the photos and then I'll show you the outcome. So I'm gonna do my best to show this image off and I hope that it actually comes out. But if it if it's a little soft, please don't hurt me. That was hectic. I'm heading to my final location now. And apart from all the people, which I really don't mind because I encourage you all to come out here. Tourism is a great thing for New Zealand and it's just a beautiful place to see. But yeah, when you're in a situation like that where you need the camera to be dead still and the bridge is just bouncing up and down because of all the people walking by, it can have some challenges there. Also, um, the other challenge I have is just the, is the lighting. Um, this place closes at 5.30 sharp. The gates will lock. If your car is in here, it's staying. So, so sunset is just at 5.30. So there's no way I'm gonna be able to get really good lighting at this time of year. In fact, this is probably the, maybe a few couple months ago would have been even better as the sun was going down even sooner. Um, towards the summer you're not going to be able to get sunset photos here regardless so I'm just dealing with what I have if we all learn from previous videos is that you just have to make the best of it and I just want to get the shot and then post-processing I'll try to bring back something but try to get it in camera first and then you should be able to get a great photo Incredible, isn't it? So this is the third and final spot and I got to figure out how I'm gonna get past these things here or just around it to be able to get that shot. So I've gotten a high shot, I've gone it down the middle and now I just want to get kind of a direct frontal shot. Um, the water here isn't as high as, it, as I've seen it before. If you see there's some dark lines here. The water level will rise pretty much almost to the top there and it just creates this massive wall of water that comes down. Still impressive none, nonetheless, 
but I've seen it really crazy before. So I'm gonna try to set up here and see and get one more image. That was a bit challenging, but I think I got all three shots. Just trying to get around the crowds and waiting for them. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, actually, remember when I said that you can't be here past 5.30 because the gates close? That's true, but if you park your car further up the hill or anywhere in Taobo and you wanna do the walk, you're more than welcome to just walk through and I'm sure that you can just be here after hours and be able to get the sunset if you want. But I'm parked inside. So I'm gonna have to just deal with what the conditions what I got now. The conditions are actually fairly nice. It's I know we're in the shadow here. We've got some nice clouds and we got a little bit of light hitting the top. So I hope that something comes out of that. Anyways, I'll leave it here with that. And thank you for watching as always. Subscribe if you haven't. And remember to just keep exploring.